Hi everyone, Lazy Fire here, and welcome to Battlefield 4 multiplayer. Now this is the first video in the multiplayer series for the Let's Play, so we're going to go over some basics here. And we're going to be playing Conquest on Operation Locker. In a second you'll get to see the map for this. Pretty big, right? No, not really. It's a bit of a meat grinder. So let's deploy. I'll explain deployment screens and a few other things that I might not get into in too much depth in the video in the post that's associated with the video. So if you have questions about that, take a look there or ask them in the thread. So as you can see, Conquest is about taking capture points. Right here, me and my team are running to E, some people are running over to D, and a few more people are running to C, the middle point. By holding points in Conquest, you're able to drain the enemy's tickets, but only if you have a majority of the points. Otherwise, the only way you can drain tickets from the other team is by killing them. The tickets are counted down in the bottom left, right near the minimap. Above the minimap are the ticket counts, the timer, and of course, the number of flags you have. Uh, my flags are marked in the blue, the enemy flags are marked in orange. You'll also notice a shape difference. The up and down square, in normal square, is for our team, and the up, uh, angled square, I, I'm not really sure diamond, I guess, would be the correct answer on this, but I always thought of a diamond as elongated. Anyways, that will de uh, denote the enemy team has a point. And I get my first kill, headshot with a shotgun. And then I get a nice long distance kill. Shotgun surprises you sometimes. Now I'm using the recon class. The recon class is known more as the sniper class in this game. If you use the recon class long enough, you'll unlock something called the DMR, or Designated Marksman Rifles. Uh, but you can also use the recon class as sort of a forward scout. The things I see me throwing a lot of uh, by hitting the number four, like that one right there, are what we call whiz balls or sensor grenades. They point out where people are on the map. As you can see, these guys all have these orange triangles over their heads. These are what we... they're called Doritos by the community, uh, but they're actually 3D spotting markers. Those will actually indicate where somebody is on, in 3D on your screen. Makes it easier to shoot some of these guys. Uh, if they get behind a wall or a piece of cover, the 3D marker disappears. But they still stay on your minimap on the bottom left. They show up as uh, wedges there as well. So just pay attention to those two things. You should be able to find most people who other people have seen. You can see in the top right there's actually a kill feed going on there. So you can see who's killed who with what. On the top left I have a chat window. So people can talk to each other on our team, the other team, or across teams. You can also talk within your squad. The squad is denoted by the bottom left there. They are the people on my screen who show up with the green name over their head instead of blue. You can spawn on those guys. If you assist them, you'll be able to fill up the squad bar, uh, the, the squad upgrade bar, I should say, which will give you different abilities. And I just got stabbed there by a guy who should have been caught by the rest of the team. If you get stabbed, you can't be revived. Reviving is a mechanic we'll cover in a few moments. Stabbing is an integral part of this game. If you stab somebody, you basically take their dog tags, and you put them in a trophy room in your battle log, so you can look at them any time you want to and understand how much better you are than somebody. As such, I don't have that many stabs. I'm not very good at it, but there are some people who can just... They're just ridiculous. You're noticing all these white markers that are showing up in the shape of different grenades. Uh, those are actually grenade markers. There's an interesting little thing about the grenade markers in this game. When they show up on the ground there, uh, if you're too close to them or you're close enough to do uh, a good deal of damage, they will actually flash red so you know to stay away from them. But when they stop, you know you're a safe distance. So it's always good to pay attention to that sort of thing. Your own grenades and teammates' grenades will also show up on the ground like that sometimes. I think in hardcore, but not in normal conquest. Now by spawning on teammates, I give them some small, a uh, little bit of extra pointage, and I also fill up the squad bar there in the bottom left. Uh, but honestly, not a lot. It's better to help them out with assists or heals or throwing ammo down for them. As you can see, the guy ahead of me is actually a healer or an assault class. He can throw down a med box, or he can defib me to revive me if I die. The guy right there that I just ran in the corner with is a support guy. He can throw down ammo for me. Uh, and I almost got hit by two mortars there, so I am leaving. There's a lot of gadgets. The mortars are actually a gadget for the support class, and they're fantastic if you know what you're doing with them. 
on this map, they can really make a big difference if you're trying to hold a point or uh, push forward to one. Outside, anyways. Inside, they don't work at all. Just wanted to give you a moment to kind of survey the area here. The sound design in this game is fantastic, uh, but some of the, the... It gets a little hectic, so you can't always tell what's happening. So, just enjoy some of the noises. Right here, I go to prone because you get a better aim with it. And I just try to take out some of these guys before they can stop me. You'll notice my screen got kind of blurry before they killed me there. That's because I was getting shot at with a sniper rifle, a designated marksman rifle, or an LMG. These things can do something called suppression. Suppression makes it harder for you to aim or see straight. And it generally means that you're in a lot of trouble. You're not going to be able to hit things as well. You won't be able to navigate as easily. So you have to be pretty smart about it. Luckily, only a few things can suppress, so you're usually okay. Now I've switched over to the Assault class. The Assault class is kind of your starter class. It's your average first-person shooter class. It uses assault rifles, has a grenade launcher that can either go under barrel or as a separate gadget, and can heal people. Uh, I have the healing abilities, but I don't use them for a little while. Also, uh, we're trying to push into this area here that's right over the capture point we can do that, we can actually probably get in there pretty easily. I'm going to do something here that's a little bit embarrassing for the person who gets hit. I beamed him in the head with a smoke, uh, smoke grenade. Uh, smoke grenades in this game are not as great as they were in Battlefield 3, to be honest. They're not as large uh, an explosive area, uh, so they don't, they don't really obscure as much, but they're still a lot of fun to get hit kills with, so... Uh, I was actually not intending this to be anything special when I first started recording it. So when I got that smoke grenade kill, I realized I have to just cycle through all the classes now and show them all off briefly at least. Assault is kind of growing on me, to be honest. I usually play a support or engineer, but uh, I really like the ability to down people as quickly as the assault guys can. A lot of the other classes have issues with their weapon choices. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit inaccurate, sometimes they fire a little slowly, uh, but for the most part Assault has your, like I said, your basic first person shooter setup going for it, which is always good. Now one of the pitfalls about the Assault class though is that, well, they don't have any sort of weapons they can unlock by using them. The Support class can unlock shotguns by using them, the Recon class unlocks DMRs, and of course the Engineers unlock carbines more carbines. I can never pronounce that right. Uh, but the Assault doesn't really have any gadgets to take out vehicles. They don't have any ability to uh, spot people at over great distances. They can heal you your, themselves and teammates and revive some teammates. Uh, that's actually what that little Z over my head means there. Um, but overall, they're just really a basic class. They didn't change much between Battlefield 3 and 4. So don't expect to see anything spectacular using uh, an Assault character but they're still a solid backbone for any team that wants to play in this game. Uh, they're just, they have a lot of useful skills. The ability to heal people and keep them alive is, of course, vital in a game that depends on tickets. Ooh, I got revived there, but that was a bad spot to really talk about it. You can see I lost the field upgrade. That means that the little bar that's over my minimap or over my squad uh, name has gone down a peg. So that's not good. That means I lose an, uh, lose an ability that I didn't know I had. Uh, looks like I have body armor, which means I'll be able to take maybe one extra shot most of the time. So one of the big parts of this game is something called Levolution. You haven't really seen too much of it. It's basically having an interactable environment and uh, being able to trigger certain events. So in this level, it's being able to close cell doors and such on people and uh, outside there is a snowstorm that blows in every now and again. It, it's not much, but it does make a difference in my mind uh, to how the game plays, and some of the events are a little bit more spectacular. A tower that can be knocked down, storms that roll in and take out you know, certain areas of the map or make things a little bit more difficult for certain classes. Uh, some pretty cool stuff that can happen through Levolution. Right here, I sneak up on some people. Not bad. I actually don't do great with this scar, so I switch back to a weapon later on, and I'll explain the weapon switching process when I get there. Uh, here I try to activate part of the evolution of this map by knocking down this tower. I forget I have smoke grenades. And I miss every shot on this person. 
So much for that. Now you can see I got a kill assist of 63 points there and then revived. So reviving works pretty well for the most part. There was a glitch early on in the game that forced you to not be revived or to get stuck in the revive screen, but they fixed that for the most part. Ow. Of course, they can't fix stupid, and I should have checked my corners. Um, so reviving in this game works a little differently than it did in Battlefield 3, where you could just spam the revive button at somebody. You actually have to... Uh, oh, sorry. I'm switching squads here. You can do that from the escape menu like I've done, or you can do that from the menu here by hitting the team setup button on the bottom left. Anyways, reviving works a little bit differently. You have to charge up your paddles to revive somebody, and you only get three of them. Uh, you don't actually have to charge up the paddles, but if you do, they come back with more health. Uh, in Battlefield 3, they came back with 100% health no matter what you did. And you had infinite revives. It led to something called medic training. Ah, and right there, my squad lead has pointed out an objective to me. If you look in the right with the uh, A circle there, that means that he's actually said, take this point, we'll take squad points if you do it. So it's always a good idea to follow that uh, suggestion that he's made. You can see I get points for that. When I capture a point, I get points. If I assist somebody in getting a kill, I get as many points as I did damage to them. So earlier on, you saw me do 63 points of damage to somebody and get 63 points as well out of it. It's a good way. It's a little better than it was in Battlefield 3 when they just gave you a flat rate of points. In this game, if you break a certain number of points, I believe it's 75 or 80, uh, they will actually credit you with a kill instead of just an assist, which is really nice. Right here, I've snuck up on an enemy mortar, and I take it right out. And shoot the guy who's coming back to protect it. Unfortunately, I walk into something that's worse than an enemy, a glitch. There's a few of them in this game like that. This is the killed in action bug. It just happens randomly when you try to vault over something. I think it's got to do with going too fast. Anyways, I get tired of the scar, so I go to my weapon selection menu and I switch out for the AK-12. It's your starter assault rifle. It's pretty solid and it does a good amount of damage. No reason not to use it. Plus, it has one more, or uh, five more bullets, or sorry, uh, ten more bullets than the scar. I don't know why it was five. But you can see there, I did pretty okay on that guy. Now I'm throwing down med packs for myself. The little med pack that I threw down is unlike the med bag I was standing over earlier. The med pack will give you a set amount of health back, whereas the med bag will increase your uh, your ability to recharge your health. So, yeah, it's worth standing on the med bags. They do pretty well, and it only takes a couple seconds to refill your health from that. But with the little med packs that I throw around, they go to the neediest person in the area. So it means that I can basically force teammates to get healed at times. Right here, I'm just trying to sneak up on these guys. Only got one, but he has friends in the building. Now you notice that my team has a lot of people on C, but we don't have C. That's because if the enemy team has as many or more people than you on a point, they will actually stop you from capturing it. So the only way we can really stop them is by getting more people on the, on the point, or stopping them from spawning on it. Which is what we seem to have done here. You can see we've pretty much surrounded the area, and we're about to take C. Uh, it's a short-lived victory. And you can see, actually, the uh, tower that I snuck down the side of in the beginning of the level is actually completely gone. It's been knocked over right here. Uh, that's part of the evolution of the level, so it's kind of neat when someone does that. It also makes it easier to kind of get down there and fight these guys, or get back up top if you go in from below. Uh, but they're pretty much entrenched down there. If we hold on to C and keep a superiority on the outside, we should be able to win the game, but that's not how this works. Oh, and here, uh, this is another bug that I ran into. It spawned me on the wrong side of the sea spawn So I ended up in the middle of a bunch of enemies, and I am just panicking right now. If I was thinking, this would have been a lot easier, but I panicked. So I just kept firing. Luckily, someone on my squad either spawned on me, or uh, pushed through there and started helping me out and got one of those guys. So I got a squad assist counts as kill, which means I increased our uh, field upgrade bar. Now one of the things about the field upgrades in this game, you can lose them. There's only one way to do it though, it's something called a squad wipe. If every member of your squad dies, you'll uh, the 
you've had a squad wipe performed to you, and you will go down a bar in your field upgrade status. I switched over to support. Support is easily, uh, hands down, my favorite class in this game. It's got a few really cool things, such as C4 when you level it the most, but it also has an airburst grenade launcher called the XM25, which is great for taking people out of elevated positions or people who are hiding behind cover from a distance. Uh, it also uses the LMGs as its main weapon. You can also use all the all-class weapons with it, of course. And the LMGs are great for a lot of reasons. One, they provide suppression. Two, they do really decent damage. And three, they come with 100 bullets, except for the very first starting one, which comes with a little bit more generous than most assault rifles, 40 bullets, or 45. Uh, don't worry about that, though. Switch out of that first one as soon as you can. The rest of them are great. Support class will also be able to replenish their own ammo in C4 and other things by picking up their ammo packs or standing over them. And so that's part of the reason why I love using them. Going around and throwing ammo packs down for your team, that's just a really good way to get points. Right there I make a rookie mistake, which I shouldn't have made considering how many hours I have in the support class, which was moving and firing with an LMG. It's not viable, so don't do it. If you're missing a lot of shots with an LMG, it's because you keep moving. I actually played support for quite a while, but because I'm cutting big sections of this out, uh, you don't see too much of it. Instead, I go back to my engineer class, which I actually hadn't used, but I had been using right before this. And it, I'm actually having a lot of fun with the engineer class. They have rocket launchers. They start out with PDWs or personal defense weapons, but they can upgrade to carbines after a few points. And carbines are amazing in this game. They're a cross between a PDW and an assault rifle. Uh, the MTAR I have here is actually unlocked through the first DLC, the China Rising DLC, and it, it just tears people to shreds. It fires fast, it does good damage up close, and it does pretty good damage at a distance. Of course, it was announced as a bug or part incorrect coding on the part of the developers, so that will change probably by the time you see this, it'll have changed, actually. Right here, I'm just taking my sweet time getting my health back, getting my ammo back, getting ready to go out there, and here's a rocket launcher in a situation it doesn't need to be in. That rocket launcher is actually the SRAW. It is a fly-by-wire, or guide-by-wire, I should say, weapon, and I love it to death. I'm probably going to do a special video just on that thing. Ugh, and I walked right into that fight. I should have known much better. But I got revived, and I'm barely able to make it away from an incendiary grenade. There are multiple types of grenades in this game, unlike Battlefield 3. You start off with the M67, which is your basic standard grenade, uh, nothing special. You can then upgrade to the V40, which is the mini grenade that I have on my engineer class. You'll see that a little later in the video, which flies pretty far, and uh, it's supposed to do less damage and have a smaller blast radius than the starter grenade, but it actually doesn't at this time, or at the time of this recording. So there's really no good reason not to use it. But I do love the RGO impact grenade. That will allow me to basically blow somebody up by beaming them in the head with it, because it'll just bounce off them and explode. Uh, but there's also the smoke grenade, which I use on my assault class, and the hand flare. Oh, there's also a flashbang. Uh, right now the hand flare doesn't have a lot of great uses, uh, but the flashbang is actually kind of broken in the wrong way. It's, it's too weak. Oh, and you see, when my uh, character starts moving his gun around, tilting it left and right, or moving it back like that, that means if I aim down sights, my character will do something called leaning. Leaning has uh, it was not in Battlefield 3, and I don't believe it was in Bad Company 1 or 2 either, uh, but leaning will actually pull you out of your kind of covered position so you can fire on somebody. Uh, this is done in response to something called head glitching being kind of prevalent in Battlefield 3 PC. Uh, it was where somebody would get to something that's just as high as the top of their head, where bullets actually leave your body in this game, and fire at somebody else uh, in that area. It made it almost impossible to kill them. So the solution DICE came up with was actually to allow for lean. Uh, but from what I understand, it doesn't work great, uh, because all you have to do is back off your cover a little bit, and you can still get the head glitching. Oops. You can see here that my team has actually lost more points since we took C. Uh, we're down now to just E, our basic giving, gimme point. Now, the square point where I can spawn at all times, the RU marked one when you see the minimap or see the spawn map, is not capable by the enemy team, so I don't have to worry about them coming in and taking it. 
And here you can kind of see the Levolution in, in effect. This uh, snowstorm that comes blowing through makes it near impossible to see outside. Uh, very annoying to fight somebody inside or outside when you are in the midst of that effect. Right now I'm just trying to figure out what's happening. Something's going on over here. You can see I spot these guys every chance I get. I put that little marker over their heads. If you hit the Q button, uh, make if you're on the PC, if you're on the Xbox or the PlayStation, I believe it's your R1 or right bumper, uh, and that will spot the enemy for you and your teammates. Make it a lot easier on yourself and everyone else around you by revealing where they are. That spotting does not last an entire lifetime, it only lasts about 7 seconds and you can actually get a field upgrade to reduce it. Oh, and here, one of those grenades that launched into this room actually took out that fuse box over there. Uh, you can see it sparking. And that turned off the lights in the room. There's quite a few of those rooms in this game that do that. And it's really fantastic to just knock out the lights and go hunting people who are camping or something like that. Now let's watch the V40 in action. Look at that thing. Just flies forever and then explodes and kills somebody. Not bad at all. Right here, I'm getting hit with a laser sight in the eyes. Laser sights are kind of annoying to play against or with sometimes. For the most part, they're pretty easy to ignore or just shoot. They're basically shoot-me markers. Um, but you can actually use them to shine them in the lights of uh, shine them in the eyes of your opponent and sort of blind them for a few moments. It's useful if you're good about that, but you give away your position pretty quickly that way. We're almost to the end of this match, by the way. It's not going to last much longer. Don't worry, my team is not going to win. We're just going to fire on some of these guys at a distance, not really do anything, and run away. You might have noticed some level of destruction in this video. Uh, that's because most of the maps have some pretty destructible areas. It's not so much in this map, which is why it's a good starter map. You kind of get a sense of why what destruction does. But it can really modify the environment pretty heavily. Uh, you can knock down buildings, you can take out sheltered areas, you can run through walls to open up areas for yourself and your team. Uh, it can do a lot for you. And of course the Levolution events can also change the flow of the game and the map. Right here, I would have been better off firing a rocket at that guy than what I did. But whatever, I will take it. I don't want to run away. Nope. Now firing in automatic like I do there is generally not a great idea. It means that I'm not going to be as accurate at a distance. It means that uh, my there's a few penalties associated with it and everything. So it's better off to tap fire when you're at anything beyond medium range, with a carbine especially, uh, but with an LMG almost up close you have to tap fire if you want to make sure you hit stuff. It's all about trigger control and discipline because the game does have a ballistics engine behind it instead of a uh, hit scan. So there's a lot more to be done with uh, missing shots and full auto and everything. Right there we kill traded. You can see he's at zero health when he killed me and I have zero health still. That's one of those things you kind of have to deal with this in this game. But we lost. So much for that. But hopefully with this video you were able to get a good sense of how the game works. If you're concerned about any of the different elements on the HUD or anything like that, check out the post that this goes to and it'll explain a lot more stuff in greater detail, hopefully. And this should give us a good basis to go into other areas of the game, maybe go more in depth into each of the classes, talk about vehicles, talk about more, maybe show off some evolution that's more impressive, and, uh, you know, all the other stuff that comes with this game. There's a lot to it. But thanks for watching. We're just going to go through my unlocks here and finish the video. And that should do it for us. Look at all them ribbons. I'll explain those at some point, too. Bye.